Looking back at recent history, one rule has held true at the start of the Nurburgring 24 hours. And that's that if Kevin Estra is starting his Grello Manti Racing number 911 Porsche towards the back of the GT3 field, he will be making his way to the front very, very quickly. And this 2023 race was certainly no exception to that rule. What has been an exception though, is Porsche's lackluster start with their brand new 992 GT3R. At the season opening round of Daytona, the cars were completely uncompetitive. Some of the teams blamed the series for balancing the cars improperly, but the series claimed there was still a fundamental lack of understanding of the 992's performance. However, Porsche has finally started to get to grips with this 992, and most recently, in IMSA's race at Laguna Seca, they were able to finally win in the GTD class. With this recent success, it finally felt like Porsche understood the performance of this 992 and could put their early season struggles behind them. However, in practice, this hope was dealt a serious blow. During a long practice run, the left rear tire gave out on the number 96 Rutronic Racing Porsche of Julian Andlauer. To prove this wasn't just a fluke, the same issues plagued Kevin Estra's Manti Racing number 911 and the Falcon Tire number 44. So, as the cars rounded the Nordschleife on their warm-up lap, Porsche still didn't have an answer for what had caused those tire issues in practice. And the engineers at Manti Racing must have had these tire concerns at the back of their mind. We can be sure though that the only thing on Kevin Estra's mind as he warms his tires and prepares for the start of this 24-hour race is how to drag this 911 to the front of the field as quickly as possible. And as the green flies, Kevin's going to be hard on the gas, already making his way past the BMW that he started alongside as he hurdles his way down the front straight into the really awkward and really tight Yokohama S. The Mercedes and the Audi are early on the brakes up front, taking it easy, but Kevin is pushing as hard as he can, braking as late as possible, making it around the outside of the Mercedes and then up the inside of the Audi to make it another two positions gained before he even reaches the second corner. The Ferrari is going to go two wheels in the dirt. There is so much jockeying for position on this opening trip around the Grand Prix circuit. The Ferrari breaks early and Kevin has to dodge to the outside to avoid that Ferrari. He's going to get hard on the power, but a little bit of understeering as he go two wheels in the dirt, gets a bad exit. We're going to look to the right side and see a dive plane, then a nose, then the front wheel of that Ferrari as Kevin breaks late around the outside to make it three wide with the Mercedes and the Ferrari. The Ferrari is going to run him out of road on the exit, and that's going to allow the Mercedes to get a nose ahead, but Kevin has the inside line, easily makes the pass stick. So they go through the Schumacher S, and then 72 BMW up front gets two wheels in the dirt, which allows the 24 Porsche to make its way past. The Ferrari is looking for a way through. Kevin breaks late on the outside as the Porsche and the BMW make contact. Kevin's going to send it up the inside of that 24 Porsche, but he has the inside line, gets the worst exit. The 24 Porsche is able to make it past again. And then the Ferrari muscling through as well. Even though it's a 24-hour race, this is certainly one of the most hectic starts you will see as the Ferrari again is looking to the outside of this 24 Porsche. There's not much room there in the chicane though. He's gonna have to settle in behind the Porsche as they prepare to enter the Nordschleife and exit the Grand Prix circuit. Now, a big reason that opening lap around the Grand Prix circuit was so hectic is because the Nordschleife, which they're on now and for the next 13 miles, is really narrow and really hard to pass on. So your best passing opportunities are gonna happen on the Grand Prix circuit and on the Döttinger Höhe, the straight at the end of the Nordschleife. So for the next five minutes, it's going to be really challenging for anyone to make any passes or make up any positions on the cars in front. But we can just admire how beautiful these cars are snaking their way through this tight Nordschleife circuit.
But just because it's challenging to make a pass doesn't mean that these pro drivers aren't going to go for it. And the 20 Ferrari is going to look up the outside of this 24 Porsche as they go into Schwedenkreuz. He makes a bold move around the outside, and Kevin's going to send it late on the brakes up the inside to make that five passes on the first lap. And as they head into the final corner on the first lap, Kevin is now up to 15th position. He and this number 20 Ferrari are working their way through the field, and that Ferrari is not done yet. Going to look to pass the Falcon Tire Porsche on the front straight. Kevin is also antsy to get by this Falcon Tire Porsche, but there's not really any room in this chicane. But look at that. The Falcon Tire Porsche signals to the right, moves over, and lets Kevin Estra slip up into 14th place. And as they head into the Kleine Carousel, which is the second to last corner before the long Dottinger straight, this will give us a good chance to judge the relative straight line performance of these GT3 cars. And because it's so much easier to pass on the straights, this will give us a good sense of how easy or challenging Kevin's run up through the field is going to be. He's going to get a nice exit out of this long right-hander, but we're going to see that this Ferrari ahead is an absolute monster in a straight line. He is absolutely eating up Neil Verhagen in the BMW and easily makes it through on this long straight. Estra in his 992 GT3 just does not have the straight line performance of that Ferrari, but he's going to close the gap in the braking zone on this BMW. He's going to look to the outside and we can look back from the number 72 BMW junior team car to see that beautiful face of the Porsche 992. And as this lap continues, we can see that this number one Audi up ahead is kind of causing a traffic jam behind it, which can often happen because it's so tough to pass around this Nordschleife circuit. And as they enter the carousel, we can look back from the BMW and see there's a few more GT3 cars that are stuck behind this struggling Audi. But again, there's just absolutely nowhere to go as they're now also fighting not only the track not only each other, but also the lapped traffic of these slower GT cars. So we'll see the 72 jump there, and Esther's going to jump as well. Oh, and you hear that a big slide from Neil Verhagen, and Esther is going to be all over the back of this BMW Junior driver, trying to get by any way possible. At this point, he can feel the leaders starting to run away as he's stuck not only behind that Audi up front, but also these BMWs as he looks up the inside, but there's absolutely nowhere to pass there. They're gonna go into Kleine Carousel. We're almost on the dotting of her, and then hopefully he'll have the straight line speed to be able to pass this BMW in front of him. And they're gonna sweep by that Opel Manta as well, the fan favorite car. Through this fast sweeping right-hander, and they're gonna make their way onto the dotting of her. Now, Kevin didn't get a great exit compared to that BMW, but let's see how the straight line performance is of this Porsche. Just as the straight goes on, slowly, 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 Esther is able to make progress. And he's going to get closer here, looks to the outside, goes to the inside on this left-hander, is able to make an overlap with that BMW and able to make a pass. This Porsche might not have the straight line speed of the Ferrari, but it certainly can make it past these BMWs as he closes right up with the 99 Rova Racing BMW. As they make their way into the Kleinus Carousel, a big slide from the 99 BMW in front is going to allow Kevin to close the gap as they come onto the Dottinger Höhe one more time. Again, all he needs is a great exit to be able to make it past his BMW, who's going to get blocked by a slower GT car, looks to the outside, Kevin makes his move to the inside, gets wheels up on the curb, onto the grass, and the 72 BMW is going to follow Kevin through. The 72 BMW of Neil Verhagen now has more speed than this Porsche in front. He's in the draft. Let's see, can this BMW make the move work and get past Kevin Estra? He looks to the outside, but that BMW just stalls out in the straight line does not quite have the performance to be able to make it past Kevin Estra in the Porsche. We're going to flash ahead to 50 minutes into the race as they head into the final corner. We can see this number 16 Audi in front of us as Kevin closes the gap in the braking zone with the Audi stuck behind that slower Cayman. But the Audi and Kevin are going to keep to the right-hand side of the track and head into the pits 
for their first stop of the race. So this is going to mark the end of Kevin's incredible first stint where he made up eight positions in a span of 50 minutes. And as they make this pit stop, we're going to get a chance to see what a driver who just passed eight cars around the Nordschleife looks like. And he looks calm as a cucumber. What's he going to do in the pit stop? He gets a little snack, a little snack from his mechanic. Just some electrolytes, some carbohydrates, some sugar. Top up the tanks on both the car and himself. <laughs> Look how calm he looks. It's just insane. They're going to refuel the car. He's going to drive away. And he's actually, as he exits the pits, going to make up one more spot by passing that number 16 Audi. But as he re-enters the track, the job is still far from over. And we're going to see in front of him is still that number 20 Volkenspiegel Ferrari. And as they go through Flugplatz, that Ferrari is going to catch some traffic. And Kevin is all over the rear of that number 20 Ferrari. But there's just nowhere to go on this straight. And we know the straight line performance of that Ferrari. He just isn't able to close the gap once he catches up on the straight. Through Schwedenkreutz, he's going to try to stay close. And maybe into Arenberg he can make something happen. But the Ferrari just breaks too late. Takes a defensive line around the outside. And Estra is stuck behind this Ferrari now. This is a good chance for us to analyze the relative performance of these cars, though. As they go through this fast left sweeper, Kevin is just able to close up so much on this Ferrari ahead. And then into the braking zone again, Kevin is just much later on the brakes, takes a huge amount of distance and time out of that Ferrari ahead. And as they go into the carousel, we'll see again how much more confidence Kevin has in this Porsche. And he closes right up to the back of this Ferrari. Now, I want you to look at the white on the bumper of that Ferrari ahead. And you see a yellow flashing light. That's not from the Ferrari. That's Kevin Estra flashing his high beams at Indy Doncha in the 296 ahead of him. At this point, Kevin knows that he's losing time because that Ferrari is slower through the corners than he is in the Porsche. But he just can't make his way past because it's so fast in the straights. Frustration is boiling over for Kevin because he feels that the cars ahead are building a gap on he and Eddie Doncha. And unlike basically every other major endurance race, there are no safety cars at the Nürburgring. So anytime that you lose on track, you have to regain on track. There's essentially no reshuffling or resetting of the order. So the pressure to pass slower cars here at the Nürburgring is incredibly high if you know those cars up front are getting away. But we just see Kevin incessantly, <laughs> look at that, incessantly flashing his lights at Indy Doncha in that Ferrari 296, who is pushing as hard as he absolutely can to get away from Kevin in the Porsche 992. As they almost make contact coming out of the Kleinus carousel, Kevin is all over the bumper. He just needs to try to make this traffic work to do something to get past Indy Doncha in the Ferrari 296. As they make their way out of the final corner, Kevin just does not have the run, but is definitely going to flash the lights again one more time for good luck at Indy Doncha. But again, as they hit the straights, that V6 turbo in the Ferrari, the same as in the Ferrari 499P hypercar, just has the pull and has the muscle to hold that Ferrari ahead of the Porsche. But as they head into the braking zone, Kevin's going to look to the inside through traffic, but thinks better of it. He knows it's still way too early in the race for a move that aggressive. But we can see here, as they come through Foxrua, even though Kevin is desperate to get past this Ferrari, there's an Audi and a Mercedes up front. They are catching the cars ahead of them. This Ferrari does have pace, just not quite the pace that Kevin wants it to have. They're going to make their way through traffic, Kevin's going to flash his lights again at Indy Doncha, who must just at this point not even be using his mirrors anymore because he's so sick of seeing all that flashing. And as they go through this right-hander here, I want you to look up to the left and you see that yellow flag flying. This is our first experience of a slow zone, which is what they do at the Nürburgring instead of a safety car. So they're going to hit their pit lane speed limiter and go 60 kilometers an hour. Despite everyone going the same speed, you can still gain some time depending upon how late you break and how early you get off the speed limiter. So as they go through this yellow flag zone, Kevin is itching and as he lets go of the speed limiter, he's already gone well before the Mercedes and the Ferrari in front. He finally gets past the Ferrari, but 
indeed he actually did jump the gun and go too early. So as he's hauling down the Dottinger Hur, he'll lift out of the gas and painfully he's going to let the Ferrari repass and he's going to have to let the numbers two Mercedes repass as well. Oh, as he gets a face full of sparks as they break into the final corner on the lap. Still more work for Kevin to do. They're going to head up the hill over the jump at Fliegplatz and Indy Doncha is going to catch some traffic. This BMW, which has his turn signal on, letting him know which way on the track he's staying. And the Mercedes is all over the rear of the Ferrari. Kevin is all over the rear of both of them, but just absolutely nowhere for him to go. That Mercedes is looking to the outside. Will he make the move? He breaks early. Kevin looks to the inside through Schwedenkreutz, but it just isn't there. He's going to look to the inside through Arenberg as well. But again, just no room for Kevin to make the pass. Oh, it looked like that Mercedes and Kevin both had the run on the Ferrari, but just couldn't find any room on the track to make that pass stick. And with us rejoining them on the Grand Prix Streca, Kevin really needs to find his way past this Mercedes ahead to allow him to catch back up to Indy Doncha in the Ferrari. The Mercedes gets a little bit blocked though at the exit of the corner, had to lift out of the throttle, and that allows Kevin to get a better run coming out of the corner. Kevin looks to the outside, but there's just nowhere to go in the chicane as there's a slow car in front. The Mercedes checks up. Kevin checks up. Kevin goes to the outside, but the Mercedes goes to the inside. It's three wide, and Kevin is through into P9, past the Mercedes, and once again, hunting down this number 20 Wolkenspiegel Ferrari. Both the Porsche and the Ferrari, though, are catching up to this Audi so quickly as well but it's gonna be really tough for them to make a move on this Audi anywhere before the dotting of her. As they come into this right-hander though, the Audi's gonna get blocked and Kevin has a really weird slide as he goes through the middle of the corner. It was like that rear left tire just let go on turn in. But as that was happening, the Audi R8 got blocked by an Audi TT through that corner and it allowed the Volkenspiegel Ferrari and Indy Doncha to make the pass. And coming out of the final corner and onto the Dutting of Her. And Kevin's gonna close in to this Audi along the long straight. They just didn't seem to have the performance this year, unfortunately. And he's gonna squeeze alongside and past as the number one Audi of Mattia Drudi lifts out of the throttle. And Kevin is gonna make that up to P8 from a P20 starting position, but still painfully staring at this number 20 Ferrari ahead of him. Towards the end of this lap though, Indy Doncha starting to catch some GT traffic and we can see again just how much faster Kevin is in these corners. He's gonna flash his lights one more time for good luck as Indy gets caught behind the traffic through the Kleinus carousel. Kevin is all over the rear. He cannot get any closer to this 296 Ferrari and we're gonna see an Aston Martin GT4 car ahead of us. Can Kevin use this car as a pick to pass Indy Doncha? Indy has to get out of the throttle coming out of the corner. That allows Kevin to get the run as he goes two wheels onto the grass, nearly hitting the curb. The Ferrari gets a nose ahead, but Kevin uses a side draft, the wake off the front of the Ferrari to catch back up. We can sit here on board the number one Audi to see these two cars side drafting each other. The Ferrari gets back ahead, and then Kevin uses that side draft again to get himself back ahead of that Volkenspiegel Ferrari. They are side by side through this left-hander, coming into the final corner. Who's gonna lift first? Indy Doncha lifts out. Kevin Estra is finally ahead of the Ferrari. But listen. As he braked late and turned into the right-hander, that rear left tire completely let go. The same problem and issue that plagued them in practice reared its ugly head in the race. And unfortunately for Estra and the whole number 911 Manti Racing crew, this would cause a significant amount of damage that would leave them in the pits for more than 10 minutes and would effectively take them out of contention for the win of the race. But being the professional team that they are, they made the repairs and got the car back out on track to try to salvage any sort of result. Unfortunately though, as the night continued, their issues with the rear left tire also continued and the team was forced to retire their fan favorite green and yellow or Grello Porsche number 911. But if there's one thing that we can be as sure of as a Kevin Estra charge through the field 
at the start of a race. It's that Manti Racing and Porsche will be back with a vengeance next year in 2024. If you made it this far, I want to thank you all so much for watching and so much for supporting. This channel has really exploded in a way that I never expected. And I want to thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart for all of your love and support. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.